guys, thank you for tuning in to Fish Island Island. In this episode, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make a rig that I absolutely love for the early springtime striped bass fishing in the back of Raritan Bay, Tin Can Grounds, Coney Island Flats. The early season, we use this lure right here. It's the x wrap by Rapala. This is the 20. I combine this lure with the squid spoon right here, if you can see that. That's your squid spoon and your x wrap 20. These two together, I make a rig that absolutely just decimates the stripers. Now, one thing that's nice about this lure, it's called the Bonita, but even though it's called the Bonita, it resembles a heron. It has all those nice purple hues and everything. I'm not sure if that camera's picking up, if you could see that. And this, this lure absolutely crushes. Another nice thing about this Rapala, it comes with a really strong VMC hooks. Now it comes standard with the trebles. If you want, you could change them out, go with the singles. You know, VMC does offer the single um, hooks too that will go on these lures. But let me take you through the steps and show you how to make this rig up. And uh, you get out there this spring and you will absolutely crush the bass on it. So to make this lure, you're going to need two snap swivels. Okay. You're going to need some fluorocarbon or some mono. I like to use 50 pound test. You're also going to need a three-way. Now they make a couple different variations of this. This is your standard plain three-way. They make some where it's like a swivel that comes up, down, and one to a total 90 degree. I just use this, just the plain old three-way works great. So you'll need one of these, and you're gonna need a two and a half foot section of leader, and a probably a six and a half foot section, because we want the rig to have a six foot and a two foot leader when complete. So let's get to it. Okay, now, for the smallest section of this rig, you're gonna use that two and a half foot piece section of the monofilament. You're gonna start by either crimping, or putting a, um, a clinch knot, or any actually any knot you want, to the snap swivel and you're gonna use a two foot of leader, okay? Now that two foot of leader, again, you can either do a, cl a clinch knot or you could crimp it, whatever you like, to the, the three way. So that's gonna be the first part of the rig right there. So get that done and it should look like that. When it's done, it's two foot, snap swivel, leader, three way. Now the next part is you're gonna use your six foot leader. You're gonna put it on the other side. Now sometimes you gotta be careful with these. You have to see like the angles it goes. This one happens to be, I guess, the same all three way. Sometimes it'll be a little different. So you wanna have that line so it's going either straight up and down, you know, and then the other one coming out the back in a 90. So be careful when you put these on to make sure you're going in the right direction. So with that being said, we're gonna attach our six foot piece now. So that gets attached to that. And I'm not doing the knots. You always, I'm sure most of you know how to do these knots, crimps, whatever. You know, I have other videos where you could see the knots and everything on. And on the end of that leader, we put another snap swivel right there. Now you could use ball bearings. These are just the plain Jane ones, nothing special about these at all. These are the cheapos, but they work fine. But if you want, you could put, you could put the tactical angle eclipse on there. You could put uh, ball bearings, swivels, whatever you want. It's not gonna matter. Now let's put the rig together. Okay. So on the further piece, on your six foot section, that's where you're gonna put your spoon. Now you could use the clock spoons. You could use what I have here. These are called squid spoons, okay? So I have your spoon. That just pops on right here. Clip it in. Don't get hooked. Also, I like to always pull down, make sure that gets in. So there's your first part of the rig right now. And that's on the six foot section of the monofilament line. I'll put that up to the side. From there, we get back our lure. Our rig, I'm sorry. And now to the two foot section is where we attached the Rapala. This is the Rapala 20. Again, just be careful. These hooks are super sharp. Just drop it right in there. Down. Close it and make sure that's snug. So now your rig's going to look something like this. There's your velour. Three-way. And six feet. To the spoon. Simply put this now attached to another swivel on your rod. You're gonna troll with braid. Connect this to your braid right here via another swivel and start letting this out. When you let this lure out, what I like to do is I just let the spoon out first. You know, it's the longest thing. Get that out behind the boat, throw it out. You know, let that get in the water and then put this down into the water. Now, you gotta be very careful with these lures. They grab that water and they start pulling right away. One of the things you wanna be careful is when you're actually bringing in the lure, once it comes to the surface, don't pull or crank hard because this will pop out of that surface and come at you like a bullet and get you in the face, the eye, whatever it may be. It could be very, very dangerous if used wrong, this lure. So you always gotta be careful. What I like to do is I'll reel it in 
And as soon as I see that lure start showing, I'll come off that reel and just either let it float up a little or slowly lift it out. You don't want to have a loaded rod where that rod's bent over because you're going to get hurt. I can guarantee you that this will come flying at you like a bullet. So be very, very careful. So back to putting it in the water now. So the, the, uh, the spoon is in the back. You pop this lure in the water. Watch it swim for a second. Make sure it didn't get tangled. Make sure this didn't get caught on the back like that. Make sure everything's clear and the lure is working correctly. Now you can slowly let it out. You can go out anywhere between 80, 100, 120. It all depends on the depth you're in that you're fishing. And we usually do anywhere but like 100 feet, 120, and you're fine. And you want to troll like that three miles an hour. And also wash the tip of the rod. The tip of the rod's going to shake so you know that lure is actually swimming, you know, radically and working. So always wash the tip of the rod, just like you would with a bunker spoon. You know, that rod's going to tell you everything that's going on below the water that we can't see. So with that being said, just troll it. Work around structures, any type of rocks, muscle beds, ledges, channel edges, you know, work these lures right there. You will not believe the amount of fish that this lure catches. Here's another rig I made up. That's a little bit tangled here. Here's one with a little bigger one. This is the 30. So you can see the size difference. This is a white one, you know, the 30 versus the 25. You can see the difference. Ocean trolling, I'll probably go with the 30, or if I'm fishing the channels where it's deeper, then probably go with the 30s but these laws are killer. So check them out, tie up this rig. You will definitely not be disappointed. If you catch some fish on these rigs, please, I love photos, send me the photos. You can email them to me. Uh, you can put them in the comments, talk to me in the comments. I love to see the photos with these, uh, what you're catching with these rigs. Again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, click the like button, hit the bell if you want to be notified when new videos are coming out, and I'll see you soon. Do you see this?